Victory Monday! Welcome back to the channel, guys. Owen the C, and we are back. I appreciate you spending your time here us on the channel. How about those Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Of course, they played on Saturday against the Detroit Lions, and today is Monday. They got the win. That makes today a Tampa Bay Buccaneers Victory Monday! Holy cow, the Bucks are back, so fire them cannons. And make sure you stay around to the end of the video. We've got something cool for you guys to celebrate the Tampa Bay Buccaneers clinching a playoff spot, but more on that later. So, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get themselves a win, but how did they do it? Well, that is why we're here. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the list of people who made huge contributions. Now, of course, when you win a game 47-7, in the style and the fashion that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won that game on Saturday, there's going to be a whole lot of people that deserve recognition. In fact, it's almost team-wide. However, we are going to try and limit it down to a list of a few. Then we're going to talk about the one thing that I really want to focus on and give some attention to in this game. The first thing we're going to talk about for the second straight week, and it can't surprise anyone out there, this one is as obvious as the word obvious is obvious. Number one on the list, the GOAT. Tom Brady. I mean, what more is there to say? He played the game of his life, or I guess I should say the half of his life. Could have been the game of his life, but we only saw him for a half. Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rolled in the first half over the Detroit Lions, and Tom Brady didn't even get to take not one snap in half number two. Moving on to the number two person on the list. Uh, instead of individualizing one person, we're actually going to talk about a group and we're just going to say the pass catcher. Now, obviously, when I say the pass catchers, we're talking about all of them. Gronk, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, on down the line. Everybody stepped up and made their plays. This is the kind of game where you really can't complain about too much. Pretty much everything that happened was good. So being positive is really easy. Comes really naturally after a game like this. So pretty much everybody, you saw Mike Evans and Gronk both get two touchdowns. Chris Godwin with a one-handed catch for his lone touchdown. Could have had a second touchdown, but it was called back due to Donovan Smith. Chris Godwin did also catch a deep ball in this game. Just an all-around great game by all the Tampa Bay Buccaneers weapons. You see what happens in a game where everybody's clicking. You had Gronk clicking. You had Cameron Bray clicking. Tanner Hudson got involved. You had Godwin, Mike Evans. Everybody was just on it in this game. When the Buccaneers play like that, it is definitely, definitely going to be tough for anyone who's playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But moving on to number three. Levante David. Now, in a game full of highlights, Levante David had a highlight that might go completely unnoticed. But Levante David made a huge play in this game, coming out of halftime to start the third quarter. The Detroit Lions had the ball, and you could easily, easily make the argument that the game was already out of reach. It was already over. It didn't really matter what happened on that drive. However, Levante David came up huge and immediately took the ball back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to start the second half. And the reason that that was major or crucial is twofold. Number one, if there was any chance the Detroit Lions were going to turn it around in that game and gain any sort of momentum, it was going to be coming out of the half. They got the ball to start the second half. That was a chance for them to go to the locker room, reset, adjust, adapt, move forward. That was a chance for them to grab momentum if there was going to ever be one. The other reason that it was crucial was because of the fact that Tom Brady was done at that point. That was going to be the first drive Blaine Gabbert was in the game, which is an interesting point. I'm surprised nobody's talking about, but that's a story for another video. That being said, the first drive without Tom, it was going to be tougher to score and being put in great field position by the defense instead of having the Lions get the opportunity to punt helped Gabbert get right in the flow, right? Blaine Gabbert stepped on the field and immediately threw a touchdown pass. That is because of Levante David. And that ability right there to immediately take the ball and score to start that second half really just put the Detroit Lions at any small minute chance or a hope that they had of coming back in that game completely into extinction. 
Next on the list, this one I'm not even going to throw up any photos for. I just want to work it in. You notice this is another game where the Buccaneers' top three cornerbacks don't play, right? Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, Sean Murphy Bunting, the Buccaneers' top three quarterbacks. We've now gone three straight games with one of those guys missing. Now that is noteworthy because if you watched last week's video and two weeks ago's videos, we have been talking about how good the Buccaneers have played at half-mast, if you will. Down a man from their top three, they've actually played better than they do most of the time when they have all three. And that is because of Ross Cockrell. We talked about him last video, but I did just want to throw it out there, get the quick shout out to Ross Cockrell again. Another game in the lineup, another dominating performance by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary with him out there. Hopefully Carlton Davis, you can come back soon. You never like to see an injury, but the Buccaneers really do have good depth with Ross Cockrell as their fourth string corner. The last person or people, position group, however you want to look at it, because there were too many people to individually give credit to. So the next group, position group, that we're going to talk about is going to be the running backs. So, of course, we all know about Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones, tremendous, was on pace for a 1,000-yard season easily. Hopefully, Ronald Jones can get back soon. Now his 1,000-yard season is definitely in question. However, that's neither here nor there, not what we're here to talk about in this video. We're here to talk about the running back depth behind Ronald Jones. Now, I was really on the train of Leonard Fournette getting more and more opportunities once Ronald Jones went down, thinking that if you gave him 20, 25 touches a game, he would definitely produce you close to 100 yards total from scrimmage uh, and maybe a touchdown or two. Now, the Buccaneers have not given Leonard Fournette anywhere near those touches in these two games without Ronald Jones. However, they have featured the running game just enough to at least satisfy me and at least pacify my urge to see it. Leonard Fournette in this game, you saw him get it rolling early. Had a couple of nice plays in the passing game, getting some checkdowns from Tom Brady and turning them into big yardage. Got a touchdown run, was heavily involved early in the game plan. However, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers took such a commanding lead. Bruce Arians went out of his way to make sure that he played younger guys and didn't give all the touches that he could have to certain individuals, Leonard Fournette being one of them. What I did not see coming in this game, and I cannot believe how pleasantly surprising it was to witness was Keyshawn Vaughn. Welcome to the team, Keyshawn Vaughn. Now, I know Keyshawn Vaughn earlier in this season did get playing time. He did score a touchdown. He's had other moments this season. However, this was the first extended use we've seen Keyshawn Vaughn get. And wow, did Keyshawn Vaughn actually look good. Showed some stuff in every element you would want. He was able to run with the football. He was able to find his way to space. He looked good in space. He was able to look adequate and pass protection. He caught the ball in this game. Keyshawn Vaughn looked very solid, and it's very exciting because running backs, it's tough always to see the transition. You know, how is a guy going to play college to pro? Keyshawn Vaughn obviously being a rookie. But running backs are generally one of the easier positions to see. Usually a running back gets on the field, and you could see, okay, yes or no. And it's usually very simple. And Keyshawn Vaughn, this was really the first game where he was out there enough to actually give him a fair evaluation. They gave him 15 carries, which is a good enough amount of touches in the ground game to see, you know, what you're working with. And Keyshawn Vaughn looked like he had some wiggle. He looked like he had some toughness. He had some ability. And it was exciting because that's something I didn't know we had. So that you're, you're talking about your third or maybe even your fourth string running back at that point, way down the depth chart, being able to get in the game and give you quality reps. And that's exciting. And it's exciting for the future going forward. Of course, Keyshawn Vaughn, a young player who's on a multi-year deal, is still his rookie contract with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's exciting to see. That's an exciting building block moving forward, a good piece to have for the offense. Who knows? I mean, this is a guy who did not play in the preseason because there was no preseason. Had the truncated offseason, barely has played this year thus far, but now you see he's getting this opportunity and running with it, making the most out of it. So that's really exciting to see Keyshawn Vaughn, a big game for the rookie. Congratulations, Keyshawn Vaughn. That is going to conclude our list and take me to the main point I want to cover for today. And it might be an underrated one, but it might be an underrated one because it's so obvious. The key point that I want to talk about in this game is the result. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in the playoffs, guys. Embrace it. Embrace today. Embrace this victory. This is not just an ordinary victory Monday. This is what we wanted. This is what 
we needed. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have made the playoffs, 10 wins on the season, and we clinch a playoff spot. Right here to close out this video, we have a little bit of something special for you guys. They put a cap on this Victory Monday, but remember, it's not a normal Victory Monday. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in the playoffs, so breathe it in, soak in this day, enjoy it, relax, Think about it constantly. Make sure it puts a smile on your face because today is not just any Tampa Bay Buccaneers Victory Monday. It's a special one, but I do still need you to yell. I need you to get loud right here with me. It's another Tampa Bay Buccaneers Victory Monday! Why do I want it? Just like I need it I wish I could run 